Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Vlog Podcast. Today is Monday, July 9th, 2018. Today I'm going to recap the all-star rosters in baseball and go over the baseball results from yesterday. Look ahead to today's slate of games, do my weekly power rankings and players of the week, go over the worst of the NFL since 2013, moves by every team, and talk a little NBA Summer League as well. All right. I'm going to start with the All-Star game. I'm going to go through the ballots on both sides. I'm going to start with the American League and go through the starters first. Starting at catcher, you have Wilson Ramos of the Tampa Bay Rays. First base, Jose Abreu of the Chicago White Sox. Second base, Jose Altuve of the Houston Astros. Shortstop, Manny Machado of the Baltimore Orioles. Third base, Jose Ramirez of the Cleveland Indians. Your outfield is Mookie Betts of the Red Sox. Mike Trout of the Angels, Aaron Judge of the Yankees. Your DH is J.D. Martinez of the Red Sox. American League Reserves, Salvador Perez of the Royals behind the plate. First base, Mitch Moreland of the Red Sox. Second base, Gleyber Torres of the Yankees. Shortstop, Francisco Lindor of the Indians. Third base, Alex Bregman of the Astros. Outfielders, Michael Brantley of the Indians. George Springer of the Astros. Mitch Hanniger of the Mariners. DHs and outfielders, Shinsu Chu of the Rangers and Nelson Cruz of the Mariners. Your American League pitchers, your starters, Justin Verlander of the Astros, Corey Kluber of the Indians, Chris Sale of the Red Sox, Luis Severino of the Yankees, Garrett Cole of the Astros, Jose Barrios of the Twins, J.A. Happ of the Blue Jays, Trevor Bauer of the Indians, is in courtesy of the fact that Justin Verlander cannot pitch in the All-Star game, so Bauer is his replacement. Although Bauer should have been in no matter what, not as a replacement. Relievers, Edwin Diaz of the Mariners, Joe Jimenez of the Tigers, Craig Kimbrell of the Red Sox, Aroldis Chapman of the Yankees, Blake Trinan of the Athletics. Your final vote candidates in the American League, Andrew Benatendi of the Red Sox, Eddie Rosario of the Twins, Gene Segura of the Mariners, and Drelton Simmons of the Angels, and Giancarlo Stanton of the Yankees. Your National League starting lineup at catcher, Wilson Contreras of the Chicago Cubs, first base, Freddie Freeman of the Atlanta Braves, second base, Javier Baez of the Chicago Cubs, shortstop, Brandon Crawford of the San Francisco Giants, third base, Nolan Arenado of the Colorado Rockies. Your outfield is Nick Markakis of the Braves. Matt Kemp of the Dodgers, Bryce Harper of the Nationals, and your DH is to be determined. Your reserves, Buster Posey of the Giants and JT Romuto of the Marlins as your catchers. First baseman, Joey Votto of the Reds and Paul Goldschmidt of the Diamondbacks. Second baseman, Scooter Jeanette of the Reds and Ozzie Albies of the Braves. Shortstop, Trevor Story of the Rockies. Third base, Eugenio Suarez of the Reds. Your outfield reserves, Lorenzo Kane and Christian Yelich of the Brewers. And Charlie Blackman of the Rockies. Your National League pitchers, your starters, Max Scherzer of the Nationals, Jacob DeGrom of the Mets, John Lester of the Cubs, Aaron Noah of the Phillies, Patrick Corbin of the Diamondbacks, Mike Fulte Units of the Braves, Miles Mikolas of the Cardinals, relievers, Josh Hader of the Brewers, Kenley Jansen of the Dodgers, Sean Doolittle of the Nationals, Brad Hand of the Padres, and Felipe Vasquez of the Pirates. And your final vote candidates, Jesus Aguilar of the Brewers, Brandon Bell of the Giants, Matthew Carpenter of the Cardinals, Max Muncie of the Dodgers, and Trey Turner of the Nationals. And those are your All-Stars. Going to go through all the baseball scores from yesterday. Just going to do the scores, not the scoring details. I'll give out your winners, your losers, and your saves if necessary. The Yankees defeat the Blue Jays 2-1 to as they improve the 58-29. and Toronto drops to 41 and 48. This game went 10 innings. Chad Green improves to 5 and 1. Tyler Clipper drops to 4 and 3. David Robertson gets his second save of the year. The A's defeat the Indians 6 0 as they improve to 15 and 40. Cleveland drops to 49 and 39. Brent Anderson improves to 1 and 2. Shane Bieber drops to 4 and 1. 
The Rangers feed the Tigers 3 0 as they improve to 40 51. Detroit drops to 40 52. Austin Bibbins Dirks improves to 2 2. Michael Fulmer drops a 3 8. Keone Keela gets his 22nd save of the season. The Rays defeated the Mets 9 0 as they improve to 45 and 44. The Mets drop to 35 and 51. Nathan Evaldi with the win actually had a perfect game going into the seventh inning but lost it. Chris Flexen drops to 0 2. The Marlins defeat the Nationals 10 to 2 as they improve to 37 and 55. Washington drops to 45 and 44. Adam Conley improves to 3 and 1. Tanner Rourke drops to 3 and 11. The Pirates defeat the Phillies 4 to 1 as they improve to 41 and 48. Philly drops to 49 and 38. Nick Kingham improves to 3 and 4. Drew Anderson drops to 0 and 1. Felipe Vasquez gets his 18th save of the season. The Brewers defeat the Braves 10 to 3 as they improve to 54 and 36. Atlanta drops to 15-39. Junior Guerrero improves to 6-5. Sean Newcomb drops to 8-4. The Twins defeat the Orioles 10-1 as they improve to 39-48. Baltimore drops to 24-65. Jake Odorizzi improves to 4-6. Alex Cobb drops to 2-11. The Astros defeat the White Sox 2-1 as they improve to 61-31. The White Sox drop to 30-60. Dallas Keuchel improves to 6-8. Lucas Giolito drops to 5-8. Hector Rondon gets his seventh save of the season. The Red Sox defeat the Royals 7 to 4 as they improve to 62 and 29. Casey drops to 25 and 64. Rick Porcello improves to 11 and 3. Heath Fillmeyer drops to 0 and 1. Craig Kimbrell gets his 27th save of the year. The Cubs defeat the Reds 6 to 5 in 10 innings on a walk off walk by David Boat. The Cubs improve to 51 and 36. Cincinnati drops to 39 and 51. Luke Farrell improves to 3-3. Three three. Jackson Stevens drops to 2-2. Two and two. The Giants defeated the Cardinals 13-8 as they improved to 47-45. The Cardinals dropped to 46-43. Madison Bumgarner improves to 2-3. John Brebia drops to 1-3. The Mariners defeated the Rockies 6-4 as they improved to 57-34. Colorado drops to 46-44. Wade LeBlanc improves to 5-0. Antonio Sanstella drops to 3-2. and two. Edwin Diaz gets his 35th save of the year. The Padres defeated the Diamondbacks 4-3 in 16 innings as they improved to 39-53. The Diamondbacks dropped to 15-41. Brad Hand improves to 2-4. and four. Jeff Mathis, yes, the catcher Jeff Mathis, drops to 0-1 as he gave up the game-winning home run to Will Myers in the top of the 16th inning. The Angels feed the Dodgers 4 to 3 on Sunday night baseball last night as they improved to 46 and 45. The Dodgers dropped to 48 and 41. Andrew Heaney improves to 5 and 6. JT Chergoas drops to 2 and 2. Justin Anderson gets his fourth save of the year. Today's games you have two doubleheaders today featuring the two New York teams. Yankees Orioles from Camden Yards with CC Sabathia and Jimmy Yacobonis. Phillies in the Mets from City Field. Zach Eflin and Zach Wheeler. 7 o'clock games. Nationals Pirates. Jeffrey Rodriguez and Yvonne Nova. That's an ESPN game. I'll give you the Nationals. They're just a better team. Game 2 of the doubleheader between the Yankees and the Orioles. Luis Sessa and Jeffrey Ramirez. Rangers Red Sox. Mike Miner and Eduardo Rodriguez, Reds Indians, Anthony D. Sclafani and Mike Clevenger, Brewers Marlins, Chase Anderson and Jose Arena, Tigers Rays, Francisco Liriano and Chris Archer, Game 2 between the Phillies and the Mets, Aranoa against Corey Oswalt, 8 o'clock Royals Twins, Danny Duffy and Jose Barrios, Athletics Astros, Frankie Montas and Garrett Cole. 10 o'clock Dodgers Padres, Clayton Kershaw and Louis Perdomo. 10-15 Cubs Giants, Kyle Hendricks and Andrew Suarez. Power rankings, I'm going to try to be quick here. 30th you have the Orioles who had a rough week. They were swept twice. Once by the Phillies and then once in Minnesota against the Twins. Adam Jones 
is somebody that's having a nice season and somebody that I think could very well be traded at the trade deadline in a package with Zach Britton or in a package with Manny Machado. 29th, the Kansas City Royals. They had another bad week. They were also swept twice. Over the weekend, it was to the hands of the Boston Red Sox. And during the week, it was in the hands of the Cleveland Indians. Brad Keller is somebody that has been improved lately as a starter. And had an all-star case going. But the Royal that made it was Salvador Perez and his 210 batting average. 28 is the Chicago White Sox. They had a rough week. They are in fourth in the AL Central. Already with 60 losses. The White Sox aren't the only team with 60 plus losses. It's them, the Royals, and the Orioles. Those are the, clearly the three worst teams in baseball. The White Sox lost two out of three in Cincinnati against the Reds. Then they got swept by the Astros in a four-game set. Leary Garcia is somebody that is having a solid season for the White Sox as like a role player. Maybe he's trade bait. I thought that he had a all-star case going a little bit. 27th, the New York Mets. They had another rough week. They split in Toronto against the Blue Jays, and then they lost two out of three against Tampa Bay, with the one win being the walk-off grand slam by Jose Batista. Esturbo Cabrera, somebody that got off to an outstanding start, has faltered of late. If he didn't falter, maybe he'd be in the All-Star game, but Jacob DeGrom was obviously their most deserving All-Star. 26 is the Miami Marlins, who have been competitive a little bit. They won two out of three at home against Tampa Bay. And then they lost three out of four in D.C. against the Nats. Starlin Castro is quietly putting together a solid season for Miami. I think he's trade bait eventually. 25 is the Detroit Tigers. They had an interesting week. They're in third in the division. They got swept by the Cubs at Wrigley Field. They won the final game of their series against the Blue Jays on Monday. And then they split with the Texas Rangers. Nicholas Castellanos, in my opinion, was one of the biggest all-star snubs. He's having a career year. And he should have made it over his teammate Joe Jimenez out of the bullpen. 24 is the Texas Rangers. Who are in last place in the AL West still. They got swept by the Astros in two games on their home turf. Then they split that series with the Tigers. Nomar Mazzaro's putting together a solid season. He had an all-star case going a little bit, but ultimately Shinsu Chu deserved it over him because of his on-base streak, and he's been hitting the ball all over the place this season. 23 is the San Diego Padres, still in last place in the NL West. They were swept by Oakland to begin the week in a two-game set at home. And then they won two out of three in Arizona against the Diamondbacks. Joey Lucchesi is quietly putting together a solid season. He's pitching like an all-star in terms of rookies. But Brad Hand, to me, deserved the Padres nod to go to the all-star game. Good for Brad Hand. 22 is the Cincinnati Reds who sit in last place in the NL Central. They won two out of three against the White Sox. And then they lost two out of three against the Cubs. So a three and three week for the Reds. Rossiel Iglesias to me was one of the all star snubs in the National League. He's having a good season and I think somebody's gonna take advantage of his trade value at the deadline. Twenty one's the Toronto Blue Jays, who sit in fourth place in the AL East. They had an interesting week. They split with the Mets at home, and then they lost two out of three to the Yankees at home. Tasker Hernandez, to me, should have been the Blue Jays' all-star, not Jay Happ. Jay Happ has an ERA over four. He pitched well for a while, but he had a rough start against the Tigers and another rough start against the Yankees. 
which is decreasing his trade value. And I've made the case several times on this podcast that the Yankees should not trade for Jay Happ. But Teoscar Hernandez, to me, should have been the Blue Jays' all-star. He's having a career year. He's in double digits and homers. He's over 50 runs batted in, I believe. He's sitting around 257, maybe higher than that. Number 20 is the Minnesota Twins, who sit in second place in the AL Central. They got swept in Milwaukee by the Brewers, and then they followed it up with a sweep of their own of the Baltimore Orioles. Eddie Rosario is an all-star snub. In my mind, he's having a career year hitting over 300 and double digits and homers. His teammate that was picked over him was Jose Barrios. He's having a nice year, but I think Eddie Rosario deserved it over Jose Barrios. And Blake Snell of the Tampa Bay Rays should have been in Barrios' spot or even Jay Happ's spot. Number 19 is the Pittsburgh Pirates. They are in fourth place in the division, 41-48 and 48 on the season. They were swept by the Dodgers and then lost two out of three against the Phillies. Corey Dickerson was their all-star snub. Felipe Vasquez made it in over Dickerson. Vasquez is having a nice year. But Dickerson deserved the spot as an all-star reserve in that outfield for the National League. 18 is the Tampa Bay Rays. They lost 2 out of 3 to the Marlins, and they won 2 out of 3 against the Mets. I already talked about their snub, Blake Snell. This was the biggest snub this year. He leads the American League in ERA, and he's somehow not in the all-star game. I think that's bogus. And everyone's saying if Gary Sanchez wasn't hurt, then... Wilson Ramos wouldn't have made the All Star team, which opened up, a, which would have opened up a spot for Blake Snell, and that is absolutely true. So, it's funny how an injury to somebody on a contender cost a deserving All Star his spot. So I had to pick Wilson Ramos as the Rays' lone All Star. Instead, what they should have done is picked both Ramos and. Um, Snell, and Ramos was actually voted in as a starter, so the league probably was like, oh, there's your Ray, but if Blake Snell was on a big market team like the Red Sox or the Yankees, he would have certainly made the all-star team, that was such a big snub. Number 17 is the Washington Nationals, they were swept by the Red Sox at home, and then they rebounded and took three out of four from the Miami Marlins. Trey Turner made the final list, but he should have been a reserve for sure. And I think Turner's having a nice year. He was hurt for a little bit this year, but he's come back and been awesome for the Nats. And he brought them back in that game against the Marlins a week ago or so. And he was deserving. 16's the San Francisco Giants. They got swept by the Rockies. Followed that up by splitting with the Cardinals at home. Brandon Belt made the final ballot, but to me he's having a career year. And probably should have been a reserve. And my argument is make Joey Votto or Paul Goldschmidt a DH and start one of them. Or even start Brandon Bell at DH. Because there's a lot of good first basemen out there that are deserving. 15 is the Los Angeles Angels. They lost 2 out of 3 in Seattle against the Mariners. Then have a big series win. At home against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Shohei Otani, if he wasn't hurt, he would have been a part of the All-Star game. He had a pitch hit home run late in the game last night to help the Angels to a win. So he's showing signs a little bit of life with the bat. It's remained to be seen whether he's going to pitch again this season or not. And if he was healthy, he would have been an All-Star lock. 14, the St. Louis Cardinals. They won two out of three in Arizona against the Diamondbacks, and they split with the Giants in San Francisco. So a solid week for the Cards. Matt Carpenter got off to a brutal start this season, then heated up of late. Then he made himself a late push for the All-Star game, but ultimately fell short. But yeah, got to give Carpenter credit for his turnaround. 13, the Colorado Rockies. They swept the Giants to begin the week. Then they closed out the week, winning two out of three in Seattle against the Mariners. So a very good week for the Colorado Rockies which is 
makes them deserving of this number 13 ranking. Adam Ottavino, to me, was one of the snubs of the All-Star game. He should have been one of the relievers chosen over Felipe Vasquez and even Kenley Jansen of the Dodgers, in my opinion. But Ottavino has a sub-2 ERA and has been the Rockies' best reliever all season long. Number 12 was the Los Angeles Dodgers. They swept the Pirates to begin the week. They closed out the week losing 2 out of 3 in L.A. against the Angels, or I should say in Anaheim. Max Muncy made the final five for the National League. But you can make a case that he was a deserving all-star along the loaded first baseman. He's over 20 home runs already, and he's having the best year of his career. Number 11 is the Arizona Diamondbacks, who are still in first place in their division. They did not have a good week. They lost two out of three at home to each the Cardinals and the Padres this week. Their all-star snub to me was David Peralta. He's putting together a fine season. It's funny, when I saw the lists break at first, I thought Paul Goldschmidt didn't make it, and then I would have went on a rant about how Paul Goldschmidt didn't make it, but I double-checked Goldschmidt made it. Well deserved. But to me, David Peralta got snubbed. He's putting together a solid season playing in the outfield for them. Number 10 is the Cleveland Indians, who sit in first place in their division. They swept the Royals and lost 2 out of 3 at home to the Athletics. Jan Gomes, to me, probably should have been the reserve catcher for the American League All Star team over. Salvador Perez, who's hitting 210. Young Gomes is hitting 240. I get their cases that they had to pick a Royal, and Perez probably would have been the choice for me. Although Brad Keller is having a career year, and Mike Moustakas is having a nice year, but not a great year. But yeah, Young Gomes to me should have arguably been the reserve catcher in the American League. Number nine is the Atlanta Braves. They had a rough week. They lost two out of three to the Yankees in New York. Then they lost three out of four in Milwaukee against the Brewers. Sean Newcomb was having a career year and was having an all-star case ready to go. But two rough starts cost them a spot and opened up a spot for somebody else. But he was having such a good season and two bad starts can cost you an all-star berth. Eight, Oakland Athletics. They swept the Padres in San Diego in a two-game set, then they won two out of three in Cleveland against the Indians. We have to recognize the athletics. They're 10 games over 500. they They're not a bad team, folks. Sean Manaya is having a nice season. He should have made the all-star team over Jose Barrios, and the twin that should have made it was Eddie Rosario or even Eduardo Escobar. But Manaya's having a great year. He threw a no-hitter against the Red Sox. But to me, that was a deserving all-star more so rather than Barrios of Minnesota. Number seven is the Chicago Cubs. They swept the Tigers at home. Then they won two out of three at home against the Reds. Brandon Morrow, to me, was their all-star snub. If he wasn't hurt, he would have made the all-star team. He has over 20 saves on the season. He should have made it over... Felipe Vasquez of the Pirates, and then Corey Dickerson should have made it in the National League as an outfielder over maybe Charlie Blackman of the Rockies. But the fact that Mara was left off the roster and they picked Kenley Jansen, who got off to an awful start. And it, let's give Jansen some credit. He rebounded really, really nicely. And is the Kenley Jansen of old again. And Felipe Vasquez, who has an ERA over three. The fact that those two are picked over Brandon Morrow to me is lunacy. And speaking of relievers, Philadelphia Phillies are my number six team. And P.S., a reliever from them, was picked as my all-star snub as well. And that's Sir Anthony Dominguez. He and Brandon Morrow should have made it over Felipe Vasquez and Kenley Jansen. Dominguez has been outstanding since getting called up. He has a 1.82 ERA. And the Phillies actually had a pretty good week. They won two out of three in Pittsburgh over the weekend. 
And then prior to that, they swept the Orioles at home in a two-game set. So, and they're in first place, so to me, Dominguez, who's been their best reliever this season, should have gone a nod over two guys that have ERAs above two and three, respectively. Although I gave Jansen credit for his turnaround. Number five is the Seattle Mariners. They had an okay week. They won two out of three against the Angels. They lost two out of three against the Rockies. It was all at home. Gene Segura made the final five list for the American League, but he was snubbed. He should have been picked, and I really like Segura. And he's having the best year of his career, but somehow he was snubbed. Four Milwaukee Brewers, they had another solid week. They swept the Twins at home. Then they won three out of four against Atlanta. Jesus Aguilar getting snubbed to me was outrageous. Very outrageous. He made the final five list, and I get it, the National League first base is loaded. My picks were... Freddie Freeman the start, and then your reserves being Jesus Aguilar and uh, Paul Goldschmidt. And I believe I had one of them as a DH. But the fact that Jesus Aguilar didn't even make the reserves to me is lunacy, because he's arguably been the MVP of the Milwaukee Brewers ever since Lorenzo Cain got hurt. Number three, the New York Yankees. Yet another solid week for them. Winners of two series, is two out of three against Atlanta at home. Then at Toronto, they took two out of three. Chad Green, to me, was deserving of an all-star spot as a reliever. But I can see why they didn't pick him. There's a lot of great relievers in the American League. Blake Trinan of Oakland was deserving. I didn't pick Chad Green to make it, but he is an ERA around 2.07. Probably lower than that because he pitched pretty well yesterday. Probably at 2.05 or 2.04 by now. But he was somebody that's having an all-star type of season but wasn't picked because there's better relievers than him in the American League. And I understand why. Blake Trinan, as I mentioned, having a career year. Roldis Chapman's been awesome. Craig Kimbrell's been awesome. Edwin Diaz deserves it because he leaves Major League Baseball and saves. So I can see why they didn't pick Chad Green. And it's funny that they picked Giancarlo Stanton as a Final Five candidate because Stanton got off to a slow start and was getting booed at Yankee Stadium. And now he turned his season around. He's hitting around 267, has 21 home runs on the year. So I could see why the league chose Giancarlo Stanton over Chad Green for the Final Five spot. Number two is the Houston Astros. Yet another great week for them. They swept the White Sox at home and swept the Rangers in Texas throughout the week. Speaking of relievers that were snubbed, Chris Stavinsky. He has an ERA around 1.77. He was snubbed from the All-Star game. To me, he or even Chad Green should have been picked over Joe Jimenez of the Tigers. Because Nick Castellanos should have been the Tiger that should have won, not Jimenez. Davinsky deserved it over Joe Jimenez. That's who I would have put in that spot, not Jimenez. And then I would have put Castellanos as an AL reserve. And number one, the Boston Red Sox, who have been absolutely on a tear lately. They've won six straight games, I believe swept the Nationals in D.C. and swept the Royals in KC. Andrew Benintendi, to me, was an all-star snub. He made the Final Five list. If I had to make a pick of who would win, it would probably be Benintendi, but I would vote for Gene Segura because, to me, he was just a huge snub having a career year at shortstop. But I do think Benintendi will ultimately win. He's having yet another solid season. Like Giancarlo Stanton, he got off to his slow start, but has been red hot for two months now. 
and has a case to be there in D.C. for the All-Star game. Players of the week. The National League, I'm going to go with Will Myers, who had a three-homer game the other day and hit the go-ahead home run the other day in Arizona to defeat the Diamondbacks. And in the American League, tough call. A lot of good candidates for this. I'm going to go with Aaron Judge of the Yankees. He had a solid week, three homers, and hitting for average as well. So my players of the week this week are Aaron Judge in the American League and in the National League, Will Myers of the San Diego Padres. Now I'm going to go through the worst NFL move since 2013. I'm just going to be quick. Arizona Cardinals not drafting a quarterback a few years ago. That's okay now. They drafted Josh Rosen. Falcons hiring Steve Sarkeesian to replace... Kyle Shanahan, I don't think Sarkeesian is a good coordinator as we saw last year. Maybe he improves on year one, we'll see. Baltimore Ravens not drafting a wide receiver in the first round the last couple years. I think this has come back to haunt the Ravens a little bit. Buffalo Bills trading an extra first round to move up for Sammy Watkins. Oh, that was a disastrous move. He turned out to be somewhat of a bust as... Receivers such as Mike Evans and Odell Beckham Jr. turn out to be better than Watkins. Panthers letting go of Andrew Norwell. I think that's a big loss for them. He was one of the more underrated offensive linemen in the last couple of years. Chicago Bears hiring Mark Trestman. Trestman, to me, was an awful NFL head coach. And they fired him, I believe, after one season. Cincinnati Bengals keeping Marvin Lewis around. I think the Bengals need a change of culture and get rid of the old and bring in the new. The Cleveland Browns passing up Carson Wentz, then Deshaun Watson the next year. If they had one of those guys, they'd be a contender right now. The Dallas Cowboys not getting something value back for Tony Romo. Since Romo had a, such a onerous contract, they couldn't get anything back for Romo, as Dallas, I believe, is still paying Romo right now. And now Romo is with CBS, and... From what I was told, I think Romo kind of still wanted to play. But instead, he was released, and then he ended up retiring for CBS. The Denver Broncos um, failing to pick the right quarterback. They've gone with some veterans over the last couple years after Peyton Manning retired. Well, some veterans and some youngsters. Trevor Simeon. They drafted a couple years ago. He's been okay. Brock Osweiler, meh. They signed Case Keenum. We'll see how he does. I think they should have drafted one even this year. Although Bradley Trubb was on the board, so I understand why they passed up on the quarterback. And Chubb was arguably the safer bet. The Detroit Lions not got getting something in value for Calvin Johnson. He retired unexpectedly. The Lions probably tra- should have traded him when he had value. So they could have gotten something back that's like the Cowboys at Romo. The Green Bay Packers releasing Jordy Nelson. I think this was a massive mistake. That's Aaron Rodgers' favorite target. He'll be missed next year as Nelson will be thriving with John Gruden and the Raiders. The Houston Texans not improving the offensive line in the past couple drafts. The Texans had one of the worst offensive lines the last couple years. And... They need some protection for Deshaun Watson, especially that he's coming off an injury. The Indianapolis Colts trading a first-round pick for Trent Richardson. This was an absolute disaster move. He was a complete bust as they traded away their own first-round pick to the Cleveland Browns. The Jacksonville Jaguars waiting too long to fire Gus Bradley. Gus Bradley was not a good NFL head coach. The Jaguars had talent, and Bradley just couldn't make it work. He gets fired. Doug Marone comes in and immediately become a better team. Minnesota Vikings not getting something valuable back for Adrian Peterson. They could have traded Adrian Peterson in 2014, but they opted not to. Instead, the Vikings had to release him, I believe, last year. 
and they got nothing back for him. The Kansas City Chiefs failing to land a true number one receiver, and they still haven't done that. I don't think Sammy Watkins is the answer. Tyree Kill's a nice player, but he's not a true number one. He's not Odell Beckham Jr. He's not Antonio Brown. He's not Julio Jones. The Los Angeles Chargers not firing Mike McCoy sooner. I don't think McCoy was that good of a fit in San Diego and in Los Angeles. And they fired him right before their move. They bring in Anthony Lynn, and that looks like the right hire, even though they started 0-4 last year. They turned their season around, but they fell short, so the 0-4 start came back to bite the Chargers a little bit. Although they hung in that playoff race a little late in the year in December, and then they lost a few key games, especially to the Chiefs in December last year. But yeah, Mike McCoy should have been fired sooner than he was a few years ago. The Los Angeles Rams not firing Jeff Fisher sooner. This is the same case. They probably should have gotten rid of Jeff Fisher when they were still in St. Louis. Sean McVay comes in and changes the culture there and immediately makes them a Super Bowl contender. Miami Dolphins signing the Dominican Sioux. Yes, he was okay, but they overpaid him and ended up releasing him. Patriots trading Jimmy Garoppolo. This turned out to be a massive mistake. Garoppolo is a franchise player. He's arguably the most untradeable player in the NFL right now in terms of value, even over Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady himself. It's either Garoppolo, Wentz, or Deshaun Watson at this point in terms of best young quarterbacks slash most untradeable players in terms of talent and age. But I don't think the Patriots thought that Garoppolo was going to be special. They got low-balled by the Niners, took a second round there for Garoppolo, and now Garoppolo is a reason why the Niners have expectations next season and have five primetime games. The New Orleans Saints failing to keep and slash bring back Jimmy Graham. They traded away Jimmy Graham for Max Unger a couple years ago, and Graham did not work out in Seattle. New Orleans, I know, wanted to bring him back, but ultimately Jimmy Graham signed with the Green Bay Packers. And once Jimmy Graham left, the Saints weren't good for those few years, although they made the playoffs last year and are a candidate to make it again this upcoming season. New York Giants, this one's easy, hiring Ben McAdoo to replace Tom Coughlin. Yes, it was time to part ways with Tom Coughlin when they did because, as they say, sometimes in life and in sports, the time it's run its course. That was the case with Tom Coughlin. And you could argue they probably should have fired Tom Coughlin after the 2013 season when they started 0-6, but ended up finishing 7-9. and So they did play a little bit better down the stretch that season. But it was time running its course with Tom Coughlin. They hired Ben McAdoo to replace Coughlin, and now it's just an epic fail. Yeah, they made the playoffs in year one, but that was courtesy of a good defense and having the best receiver in football on your team. But in year two, best receiver in football is hurt, and your defense is getting injuries left and right, and McAdoo was just an epic fail. He benched Eli Manning for no reason, and he loses his job. Ben McAdoo is just an awful football coach, and he probably shouldn't even have an NFL job ever, ever, ever again. And the only reason why he looked like a smart hire as the Giants offensive coordinator when they got rid of Kevin Gilbride in 2013 was because he was Aaron Rodgers' quarterback coach. That's the only reason why it looked like a smart hire. And as we all know, Aaron Rodgers is a god, and Ben McAdoo is a scrub. So that was easily the worst move the Giants made over the last five years. The New York Jets, bringing back Darrell Revis when he was already washed. There's a reason why Darrell Revis bounced around a little bit. He was cut by Tampa. He was cut by New England. And then the Jets bring him back. 
and he's ultimately not the same player that he once was. Oakland Raiders failing to improve the linebacking situation. There's been a couple guys that have come into Oakland as young draft picks and turn out to be busts. And guys that they've brought in that haven't really panned out, like Bruce Irvin, who's a nice player but didn't live up the first round pick potential. But he just didn't work out, and Oakland needs to improve its linebacking corpse. But they really haven't done that. They did not even do that in the first round of the draft this past year. The Philadelphia Eagles hiring Chip Kelly. Yeah, it worked out well in year one. But after that, it fell right into the tank. He made some bogus moves, releasing guys like Deshaun Jackson and LaShawn McCoy in their primes. And McCoy's still in his prime Deshaun Jackson really not. And bringing in guys like DeMarco Murray, who just weren't great fits in Philadelphia. Kiko Alonso was another one that he brought in on his own. Just wasn't a good fit. And ultimately, Chip Kelly gets fired after a disastrous season. And the Eagles don't regret that move now because they won a Super Bowl since then. But hiring him in the first place was a mistake by Philadelphia. Pittsburgh Steelers not locking up Le'Veon Bell yet. If they lock up Le'Veon Bell, then this bad move will ultimately not be a bad move anymore. But Bell's playing under the franchise tag and is under the franchise tag right now. Pittsburgh has to keep him around. Other than Ben Roethlisberger, the most valuable player in that offense, he could do everything for them. San Francisco 49ers. Not getting value for Colin Kaepernick. He's somebody that was on the trading block a couple years ago. They could have traded him, but instead they pretty much got rid of him for nothing. Seattle Seahawks bringing in Jimmy Graham. So they traded for Jimmy Graham and traded away Max Unger. And that proved to be a bad trade because Seattle's offensive line got worse when they got rid of Unger. And Graham didn't really do anything in Seattle. And the Seahawks were ironically better without Graham. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers hiring Lovey Smith. Yeah, he did a nice job with the Bears, but he did not do a good job with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was gone, I believe, after two seasons with the team. The Tennessee Titans waiting too long to fire Mike Malarkey despite making the playoffs last season. Malarkey was not a good head coach. They made the playoffs last year in spite of him, and the organization knew it. They fired him after the season, and they bring in Mike Verbell, who I think is going to be a solid coach. And last but not least, the Washington Redskins not getting something valuable back for Kirk Cousins. They had him on the franchise tag for a couple years, and then they ultimately let him walk. They probably should have just traded him last year or the year before and got something in value back from him. And the Vikings would be a team that would pull off a trade, but the Vikings played it smart and used their cap room on Kirk Cousins instead of trading assets for him. But imagine the haul that Washington could have gotten back from a team like the Vikings for Kirk Cousins. That would have been something. Last but not least, I'm going to go over some NBA Summer League scores from yesterday. In the Vegas League... The Timberwolves defeat the Raptors 103-92. Kaita Bates-Diop, 24 points in the win. Jordan Lloyd, 17 in defeat. The Spurs defeat the Wizards 95-90. Jerron Blossom game, 22 in the win. Devin Robinson put up 24 in the beat. Blossom game, to me, has a shot of playing on the Spurs next season, or perhaps in the league. The Hornets defeat the Heat 94-90. Willie Hernan Gomez, 22 in the win. The ex Nick Darrell Macon, 17 in defeat. The Trail Blazers defeated the Hawks, 85-68. Jake Lehman, 23 in the win. John Collins, 18 in defeat. The Mavericks defeated the Bucks, 81-78. Jonathan Motley, 20 in the win. Travis Trice, 18 in defeat. The Rockets defeated the Warriors, 87-81. R.J. Hunter, 24 in the win. Marcus Derrickson, 23 in defeat. The Jazz defeated the Knicks, 90-85. to 
Georges Niang, 20 in the win. Kevin Knox, 19 in defeat. The Magic defeated the Grizzlies, 86-56. Jonathan Isaac, 12 points in the win. Kobe Simmons, 15 in defeat. The Clippers defeated the Kings, 88-78. Sindanius Thornwell, 22 in the win. I think he has a chance to have an impact on the Clippers next year. And Justin Jackson, 28 in defeat. He's somebody that I like for Sacramento next year to have a bit of a breakout. Last but not least, the Lakers defeated the Bulls, 69-60. to Josh Hart, 19 in the win. Matt Williams Jr., 12 in defeat. That's it for the podcast today. I'll be back tomorrow with more Summer League talk, baseball chat, and anything else that goes on in the world of sports. I'll also be doing the worst of Major League Baseball over the last five years by every team as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everybody.